Hello, this is Mike Lively, and today we're looking at the UTK engine, and you may be asking why. And that's a good question. And it's time for Paper Vision to evolve. We've got to get a new vision for Paper Vision. And I think looking at how UDK is set up, how the Unreal Engine works, and some of the things that we can do in Paper Vision now uh, that is very much UDK like is uh, very important. So let's talk about the uh, wonderful resources. First of all, the great thing about learning UDK or the Unreal Engine is that there's tons and tons and tons of information out there on the web. So as opposed to any other piece of software I've ever worked with, I probably have found the most information concerning this particular engine. So it's great. Uh, tons of YouTube uh, tutorials. Uh, here's one done by Raven, 67854. Go ahead and check out that channel. Great information. Lots of information on the documentation site as well, and epicgames.com. And finally, um, remember you can download this at uh, www.udk.com forward slash udk download. So make sure you get the download and follow along. Now I'm not going to be repeating uh, these tutorials that are on the web, but instead I'm going to be comparing how you can take this UDK and the elements in it which you can make uh, use of in paper vision. So let's go ahead and do a simple example and as we work through that example I'll make comments on how that can be done in paper vision in the same way. So I have the Unreal Engine up on the screen, and just a few things. If you work with 3ds Max, you notice that you've got the four-panel type uh, uh, manipulation idea. So you've seen that before, and I won't go over that. But specifically today, we're going to be working in this viewport right here. And what you see right here on the screen, I'm going to bring this down so you can see everything, or up, is you see what's called a brush. So here's your initial brush, and we're going to use that in a sense to make a floor, and we're going to put textures on that floor. So what I'm going to do is click on that to activate it. Now I want to make sure that you know there are uh, like four or five very important buttons here right away at the top of the panel. And there's a, the pointer button, there's the translation button, there's the rotation button, there's the resizing button, and then there's a the non-uniform resizing button, and we'll be using those in, as we move on in this tutorial. So uh, go ahead and click on this. Uh, I'm, I'm clicked on basically this uh, button right here for selection, and, and go ahead and select that. And I want to basically build a floor, so I'm coming over here to this little cube and right-click on it, and I get this properties panel. Now notice that we want to mit map everything, and what does mit mapping mean? Multiples of two. So let's come along here and create a mit map floor. We'll go 1024 and for X, and 1024 for Y, and 8 for RZ and notice that things are different now as far as the coordinate systems are concerned. This doesn't match the coordinate system of uh, paper vision. You actually have a standard kind of math X, Y, and Z. Hit build. So what we want to do now is add the CSG. So if you come over and roll this panel on the left hand side you see CSG add. So click on that and you get this little kind of a checkered uh, background and you actually can drag things onto that background. And uh, if you hold down uh, basically one of the mouse keys you can actually rotate around the system and and move it around as you want. So there you have it. And if you're used to working with Blender or once again the shortcut keys in 3ds Max, some of them work here, not all of them. But once again, just hold down, for example, the uh, right mouse key and, and move your cursor around. And you can actually get some rotation here. You can also use your arrow keys to move it forward and back or side to side. Okay. So what we want to do right now is add a light. So in order to add a light, all we have to do is right click on the uh, particular panel that we've created and go add actor and hit add light and this is a point light for example and you see your point light right here now a bunch of points I want to make here about all of this is uh, is suddenly you, you start seeing this concept of gizmos so if I come over here and roll over the translation tool and click on that I actually get the translation gizmo so once again if you're familiar with 3ds Max you're familiar with these gizmos and I can actually move this light around now the same thing concerning paper vision. You should have the ability, in a sense, to put elements in and have a design stage. Just like you have with Flash Builder, in a sense, you have a design portion and a source portion. Uh, you have a very powerful uh, uh, interface there in paper vision. Why not use it with Flash Builder and build your design interfaces? So, one of the things you might be very much interested in doing right away is building gizmos for the different objects that you want to move around the stage. And once again, if you're familiar with 3ds Max, you certainly are familiar with these gizmos. There is a problem, however, I have found with uh, paper vision as far as building gizmos, is the fact that you have to unproject to know where you're at. That is a big problem, and we'll be tackling that as we move on with this series. Notice as I move this up, so you can see the light, in a sense, gets darker and dimmer. So you get some dynamic shading here. Can you do that in paper vision? Absolutely. What do you use to do that with? Pixel benders.
So as I mentioned, in the UDK, the Unreal Engine, you have this uh, ability to do dynamic lighting. Isn't that cool? As you move that light up and down, you can see how the surface shades differently. And do you have the ability to do the same thing in Paper Vision? The answer is yes. Because in Paper Vision, new to the Adobe software is the Pixel Bender. So if you go to Chapter 5 of my book, you'll see a portion on getting started with Pixel Bender. And I go through how to use Pixel Bender. But not only that, I show you how to make a simple light. I give you the algorithm, and explain it, and I give you the Pixel Bender program. And then I show you how to use that light to dynamically shade a building. And you can basically see the big difference between this is a washed out building and this is the contrast that you get when you use dynamic shading with Pixel Bender. The same thing that you're seeing in the UDK engine, and you can actually do the same thing in Paper Vision. So that's one of the things we'll be implementing in the future is this dynamic shading on services using Pixel Bender. Pixel Bender makes it easy to dynamically shade surfaces. And so what, what's the other thing? We want to be able to bring in different content. So if you come up here, there's a button right here. And it says Open Content Browser. And this is a beautiful thing in, in uh, the Unreal Engine. And you get this beautiful content browser. We have all these different uh, options that you can choose from. I mean, it's just wonderful. And if you get a different game, along with that game comes the resources for that game. And you can choose different... Um, things from that game and grab those materials. And I'm going to show you how to actually pull information or content from uh, the Unreal Engine into Paper Vision. So let's go back to our engine and let's just grab a particular cool material. We'll go to that and we'll just drag that right onto our, uh, our material that we've created. So I'm just going to drag and drop. And this is a thing that we definitely need in paper vision as opposed to programming every single surface that goes to paper vision why not build a nice little browser that you can just drag material right onto so if you want a different material you just drag it and that material changes okay now that all of that has been done we're gonna go ahead and build our program so let's go ahead and go to build and choose lighting and I'm gonna yank off the use light mask because it just takes a lot more rendering to make that happen so I'm gonna render real fast here and hit OK Let's close that. And now we can run it. So we'll right click on the scene again and go play from here. And suddenly you're in this 3D environment. Isn't that cool? I mean, not a lot of work here. And boom, boom, all of a sudden you're shooting and you're, and you're uh, burning, you know, and without much programming. And so if you're used to uh, a lot of the program engines that are out there, like Dark Basic or like uh, 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 other like engines that build uh, 3D environments very rapidly, uh, you can see this one does it as well. And why can't Paper Vision do that? Now, there is a limitation on how much 3D you're going to get with Paper Vision, but remember, with Paper Vision, we're going to be using it to build academic sites. We're going to be using it to build neat 3D environments. We're not going to be able to do full 3D games unless you get a C++ engine on the back end, but we're going to be able to do some really cool stuff. But the key to that is going to an engine format like this we can build things more rapidly. Okay, let's hit escape key and get back. Oh, uh, there's one more thing I just want to show you is you can actually come along here and uh, set where you want your player to start. That's easy to do as well. Just right click here. Go to actor, add actor, and go to add player start. You can move that around and decide where your player wants to start. So everything in a sense has a gizmo. You also have rotational gizmos as well. You can see that. And once again, if you're familiar with 3ds Max, uh, you're definitely familiar with that rotational gizmo. And then you have a sizing gizmo that allows you to size things, and you have a basically a non-uniform sizer. So all this is very familiar to you if you've gone through my tutorials on YouTube on uh, 3ds Max. So once again, we're going to run it, and we're going to move around a little bit, and uh, I hope you're getting a new vision for Paper Vision. I am very excited. This was Mike Lively. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.